Hey everyone, it's Sarah, the Register Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I want to be going over the macrolides. So let's get started. The macrolides are a group of antibiotics that mainly target gram positive bacteria, but they can go after some gram negative as well. So, with gram positive, what they like to go after are like streptococcal infections. Carnibacterium diphtheriae, which is a main cause of diphtheria, and staphylococcal infections. Now, one group that the macrolides aren't effective against that are also gram positive are the enterococcal infections. So, whenever we're talking about gram negative, they like to target Salmonella, chlamydia, and gonorrhea, which are big sexually transmitted infections and some stomach infections that are caused by Helicobacter pylori and Haemophilus influenzae, which is something that affects younger children and can lead to epiglottitis. Now, because the microlides target these certain things, they're really good at treating certain cases of ear infections, especially ones that affect the middle ear, also sexually transmitted infections, as you've seen with chlamydia and gonorrhea, and infections that invade the respiratory system, such as the upper part of the tract and the lower part of the tract. So your throat, your sinuses, and anything that could lead to pneumonia. Plus, it can help target GI infections and urinary tract infections. So now let's talk about the medications that are part of the macrolide family. And to help us do that, we're going to remember the word face. So F is for fidaxomycin, and this is actually new to the group, and it's used in cases of C. diff. And C. diff is like the super infection that invades the gut that causes profuse diarrhea. And unfortunately, C. diff is from prolonged usage of certain antibiotics. Then we have azithromycin, chlorithromycin and erythromycin. And notice that these last three, which have been in the group for a really long time, end in thromycin. So we have the ro here and we're dealing with macrolide. So hopefully that can help you remember that for whenever you're looking at your patient's med and saying, oh, this is a macrolide. Now, how can you expect to administer these to a patient? Well, they're absorbed fairly well in the gut, so we can give them orally, or we can give them in severe cases parenteral, mainly the IV route. Now let's talk about how macrolides work. So these medications generally have a bacteriostatic effect on the bacteria, meaning that they stop the growth and reproduction of the bacteria. Now, depending on the antibiotic group, it'll work differently. For instance, like aminoglycosides that we talked about in our previous lecture, they have a bacterial bactericidal effect on the bacteria, meaning that they kill them. But generally speaking, macrolides affect how they are able to grow and reproduce. Now, how they do this is that they inhibit the protein synthesis of that bacteria. So we're talking about the creation of proteins. Now, proteins are a very important structure for the bacteria. They need healthy proteins that are able to function correctly in order to survive and thrive. But that's the exact opposite of what we want whenever we're dealing with a bacterial infection. So if we can somehow stop or inhibit this process of creating proteins, we can get rid of this bacteria. So what we want to do is we want to target the structure in the bacteria that creates the proteins, and that is the ribosome. So the ribosome is a really neat structure. It's made up of a large subunit known as 50S and a smaller subunit known as 30S. And these two subunits come together to stack amino acids and it creates this beautiful polypeptide chain, hence our protein. Now the macrolides can help affect this process. And what it does is it'll target the big part of the ribosome, 50S. So remember that. Macrolides, macro means big, it targets the bigger subunit of the ribosome, which is known as 50S. The number 50 is larger than 30, so remember that, it goes here. And whenever it targets this subunit, what it's gonna do is it's going to affect translocation. So we're gonna inhibit how messenger RNA and transfer RNA can move within this ribosome to create the protein. So whenever we do that, we affect the growth and reproduction of our bacteria, and that's what we want to do. We want to get rid of this infection. Now let's talk about our role as a nurse whenever we're administering these medications. 
So before administration, you just want to confirm that your patient isn't allergic to these medications. Now sometimes whenever a patient is allergic to let's say penicillin, the macrolides may be a safer alternative for them. Also look over your orders. Make sure you don't need to collect any cultures before starting the medication. Now during administration, you want to make sure that you are monitoring for the effectiveness of this medication. Is it actually working to treat the infection? So what are some things that tells you this medication isn't working, your patient's getting worse, and they may need something else? Well, you want to make sure that your patient doesn't have abnormal body temperature where it's like way too high or way too low. Their blood pressure is hypotensive. They're tachycardic. They're having difficulty breathing. They're having mental status changes and their white blood cell count is severely elevated. Remember, a normal count is about five to 10,000. So anything greater than that is a warning sign. Now, another thing you're going to be doing as a nurse is you're going to be monitoring for adverse effects that could happen with this group of drugs. Plus, you want to be able to educate your patient about it so they can let you know, hey, this is happening. So to help us remember those adverse effects, so we're going to remember the word clog. C is for cardiac issues, specifically a prolonged QT interval, which could lead to a deadly rhythm known as torsade supplant. And there is an increased risk of this happening if your patient's also taking other medications on top of taking this antibiotic, like some antiarrhythmics like amiodarone or quinidine, or if they're on quinolones, that can do that, or like Haldol, which is an antipsychotic. L is for liver problems like cholestatic jaundice, which tends to happen with erythromycin, which is the oldest one of this group of medications. So you'd want to monitor those liver enzymes. Look at the ALT, the AST, the bilirubin level, and then just look at the patient. Are they experiencing jaundice? Are they having abdominal pain? They're really fatigued. They have dark colored urine and light colored stool. The dark colored urine is where the bilirubin is spilling over into the kidneys and and instead it should be in the stool so it's taking the color away from the stool so the stool looks light in color instead of the nice dark brown color. O is for ototoxicity so this is a toxicity that's affecting the ears specifically those hearing structures of the ears and it tends to be reversible so you want to tell your patient to immediately report any ringing in the ears, hearing loss, they're feeling dizzy or just feels full in their ears. Now this tends to happen in patients who are taking high doses of these medications and who also have altered renal function. And then lastly is G for GI upset. Now this tends to happen because of increased GI motility that can happen with erythromycin. So some patients who are taking erythromycin, they report that it's causing them a lot of GI upset. So if it is happening and they can't tolerate it, you can tell them it's okay to take it with some food because that may help decrease it. But as a side note, it's best to take this group of medications without food because it helps encourage high absorption of the medication. So if GI upset isn't happening, you want to educate the patient to take this medication group one hour before or two hours after a meal with water only, about eight ounces of water, and not to drink it with any acidic drink like fruit juice or milk because that can actually alter the absorption. Okay, so that wraps up this review over macrolides. And if you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.